want to thank everybody for coming, first of all, especially in this weather. It really means a lot to the family that you're here. They need to see the support and the love that they have in this community. Um, Miss Anita Neal is my godmother. She knows me since before I was born. She helped raise me. Um, she says that I'm family, and I love her like family, and I love Kaya very much like family, and I miss her dearly. And it really hurts me when I hear again, or when I have to talk again about the, the story of what happened to her, because what happened to her should not have happened to any human being on this earth. If someone is sick and in pain, you're supposed to help them, no matter what they're there for, or what you think they're there for, what they're doing is supposed to help them. That's basic human kindness. That, and this was not given to her. Um, and I want to know what kind of a person sits there and listens to a woman cry and moan and beg, beg, and they have beg for help for an entire shift, and no one lifted up the phone. What kind of person does that? Who do we have working with these badges and these guns? Um, I just wanted to remind everybody that we do have a petition out there. Um, I have put this together with the help of a lot of good friends from my church. Um, who make up our, our little organizing committee. And I'm very grateful for everybody's help. And it's nice to see an event come together. But I want the people of the community to know that I did invite our mayor, Bill de Blasio, to this event tonight. We actually have been reaching out to Bill de Blasio since he was public advocate. And he has been unresponsive. At first, he said that, um, he was concerned about the case, and he gave us people in his office to contact about the case, which we did do several times, and his office is unresponsive. I have the emails, I have the faxes, I have the letters. This is not acceptable. People are dying. People are being beaten, people are being arrested for nonsense. And the mayor has made promises and he's made statements and he needs to put his money where his mouth is, so to speak. And I want the community to know that. And um, I want to thank the people that are here. We have someone here from the district attorney's so office. Thank you for coming out. Thank you very much. And I will give you an opportunity to, to say a few words. Thank you. Um, I invited some council members. Um, they said they would be here. I don't see them here. Um, we invited the public advocate. She said that she couldn't make it. I thank her for at least answering our invitation and letting us know. Because to me, that shows some respect and some courtesy. Listen, I know what you're going through. I do support you, but I can't put you on my schedule for tonight. But please keep me informed of what's going on is a much better response and a much more respectful response to your constituency than I'm not even going to acknowledge your letter. It's like she never, you know, they just don't care. And that's, that's, that doesn't sit well with me. And I'm going to keep helping to organize things and keep making noise until they decide it's important enough to care. Um, we have a petition over in the front when people walk in. If you haven't signed it, please do sign it. We also have that petition online. It's www.causes.com, justice for Cayenne. Uh, you, can, you can sign the petition. Um, and I just, you know, I just want to say that every life is precious and um, People, and I don't think this is the case with Kaya, people make mistakes sometimes. They say things they don't mean, they do things perhaps they shouldn't, but that's not an excuse for a death sentence. Um, and we're supposed to have a justice system, not a punishment system. Um, 
The other thing I wanted to mention, it wasn't mentioned before, but Jabril did caught on it, is that there have been other cases of people being denied medical attention and central bookings to the point where it really, um, I, I only know of one case where someone died that was Angel Cordero. Um, he died a couple weeks before Hyam did, supposedly on a seizure. He was waiting for four hours for an ambulance and he passed away. Um, there were also some people who filed lawsuits because they were diabetic and they were denied their insulin or denied medical attention. One individual uh, is brain damaged as a result and won a $17.5 million settlement. And I guess that's supposed to make it better, the money. It's supposed to make it better, but it doesn't. Um, but he won a large settlement. It was all over the newspapers. It's all over the internet. Um, because they denied him his medical treatment and he became, he was left so long without his insulin that he became brain damaged. There was another person who was arrested for putting his foot on the subway, um, on the seat of the subway. And he was denied his insulin. And um, when he got to the judge, the judge saw how sick he was in order that he be sent to Metropolitan Hospital. I'm hearing these stories, most of them center around diabetics, but there are quite a few stories of people being denied medical treatment in Brooklyn Central Bookings in particular. And I think that it's time that the community take a stand about that. Um, especially when you consider that the charges these people were there for were things like not paying a parking ticket, having your foot on a subway seat, um, disorderly conduct, and trespassing. Really big crimes these people committed that their lives had to be put in danger. Um, I just wanted to invite um, our representative from the district attorney's office to come up and say a few words, and I want to thank her for coming out. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Denise Peterson, and I am the director of community affairs for district attorney Kenneth P. Thompson. And I received the, the office received the invitation. I'm also here uh, tonight with Sadia Adosa, who's the deputy director. And we are here this evening. We first apologize for being tardy. It took us about over an hour to get from downtown Brooklyn uh, by uh, vehicle um, to get here. So, but we thought it was important to get here as long as it was going on. And it was confirmed that it was going on. So we wanted to get information and listen to the community and the voices and the concerns, and we will take it back and we will be speaking with the district attorney concerning your concerns um, as it relates to Central Portland. And so that's why we are here this evening and we will follow back up with the family um, to see how uh, we can be of assistance um, as it relates to your concerns. So we thank you for the invitation and um, we will be in touch with the family. If there's any specific concerns that anybody wishes to give to us um, that we have missed hearing this evening, please feel free to approach us. Thank you. Hi, Amy. Um, I'm an attorney, as you mentioned, and I'm also a Flatbush resident. And I'm here on behalf of the Center for Constitutional Rights to offer our condolences. We are very, very sorry for your loss. Um, this was heartbreaking, senseless. You know, those words don't even kind of describe um, the tragedy that happened. And I'm, I'm very sorry. Um, and we also wanted to extend our admiration for everything that you're doing to keep this issue alive, to keep this issue um, in, the, in, in the public eye and in the media, um, to everything that you're doing to um, bring this issue to the attention of local elected officials, everything that you're doing to organize community members around this issue. And also, 
as I've read in the media and also to, as you have expressed tonight, to make sure that this doesn't happen to another family. And we truly admire your efforts. Um, so as uh, Jabril mentioned, I was an attorney uh, litigating the class action lawsuit at Floyd versus the City of New York. Um, and as you know, that the NYPD was found liable for violating the constitutional rights of hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers, particularly black and Latino New Yorkers. Um, and I was asked to kind of address the parallels between that case and what happened to Kayam. And it's it's not difficult to do. I mean, the, the you know we, we brought this stuff, this constitutional challenge um, based on legal issues, but at the core were human issues that the NYPD was frequently um, failing to respect the rights and dignity of, of black and Hispanic people. Um, people were being humiliated on their way to work, on their way to visit their, their grandparents, on their way to the gym. Um, that the NYPD was refusing to listen to community members who you know, were, were informing the NYPD officers that there was a problem of racial profiling and you know, that there was a problem of accountability. Um, and that the fact that we had to you know, go to court to demand accountability and transparency to understand the NYPD's practices. And you know, if you look at those kind of human issues that were involved in the case, it's not difficult to see the parallels here. You know, when we learn about Kayam's family's struggle to find answers, to find out who, you know, who was responsible, to find out what happened, I mean, it's very, very clear that there's a real need that for the NYP to be, um, we need an accountable police department. Um, and, and we look at, you know, kind of the search to find out, again, what happened, we need a police department that's accountable to community members. And again, when I heard the story of um, how you know black women's pleas for medical attention and help were ignored, I mean, it's clear that we need a police department that respects our humanity. Um, and so, you know, in Floyd, we we offered and, and we won a court monitor to kind of oversee the police department's practices. And really, what we need is kind of a change in the way that the NYPD has been conducting business. You know, we, we ask for a joint reform process because we know that the NYPD needs to sit down with community members and talk about the problems and identify solutions, and there won't be real change until that dialogue happens. Um, you know, and we worked alongside community groups um, to get an inspector general and, and city council to get an inspector general because we believe that the issue of custodial arrest, which were mentioned, and the issues of, of deaths like I have need to be investigated and addressed. Um, so, you know, again, there, there are several overlapping issues, but really what I want to say is that you're not alone in your search for accountability within the NYP, in your, your search for transparency of, of the NYP's practices, and, and um, really your search to find answers. You know, like you're, you're really not alone. You have our admiration, you have our support in your search for justice, and we really do wish you justice.